a todos com a paz do Senhor Jesus. Em reverência à palavra do Senhor, convido aqueles que podem. We greet everyone the peace of the Lord Jesus. In reverence to reading the word of the Lord, we're going to stand up. We're going to open our Bibles. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. We're going to read just one verse. John 4. John 4, verse 7. John 4, 7. Just a small part of it. John 7, that's right. That says the word of the Lord. A woman of, of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus, oh, just the first part. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Lord, we ask that you bless your message. Renew the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We ask the Lord that you, through your word, you bless your people, your church, church. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. The word of the Lord says that that a woman from Samaria she went out to draw water from a well. And Jesus where, was there, setting, uh, sitting down near the well. There was those days a disagreement, uh, a division between the Jews and the Samaritans, because one thought that he was superior than the other. And the Samar Samaritans, they were Jews that throughout time, they left the laws of the Lord and got corrupted and got contaminated and became impure. When Solomon at that time he is uh, compared to the in what he didn't fail he is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. The hero of Solomon Jeroboam causes a rupture in the kingdom so the kingdom is divided and here we understand one thing already When the Spirit of the Lord is not present in the life of man, the kingdom is and end up being divided. And a divided kingdom cannot survive. So it falls, it falls, it stops existing. So the people there from Samaria, in spite, in spite of serving the Lord, the true God, the God creator of heaven and earth, they introduced into their city, into their midst, into their houses, other gods. And they also adored other lords. So that they had become a mix, mixture and they have contaminated themselves. So that they were considered by the Jews as impure. So they are in Samaria. The word says that existed also in that, pa in that place. A, um, it's, I'm getting old. I can't remember. <laughs> there was a difficulty in in understanding how to adore God and, and which way we should uh, praise the, our God. But as we are reading the book of Nehemiah on the last previous Sunday schools, and there it speaks about uh, an individual called Sambalach. Uh, he was the governor of Samaria. He was one of the, the greatest oppositors to the reconstruction of the walls and of the gates of Jerusalem. And then we will see that religion, when religion was mixed up with politics, 
with adoration to other gods. The religion was contaminated, and the people of that city didn't know anymore how to praise their God. That's why the Bible says, my brethren, that it wasn't necessary for Jesus to go to that place have a meeting with that woman. Because the people of that city, in spite of seeing, they were not able to understand the plan and the project of God. And Jesus speaks about this. And the people that have been walking in darkness saw a great light. And in the region of the valley of the uh, death, a, sh a light w was shown. And the word says, my brethren, that that woman, she went to the well. And she went there because of a necessity. The well was well known by that woman. And she also know, knew the water that came out of that well. She even knew the history of that well. She said that that well there was dug up by Jacob and was given us an inheritance to his son Joseph. So she considered Jacob a great man. And she called Jacob as a father. When Jesus goes to have a meeting with that woman, she asks, are you greater than the father Jacob? So then for her, the greatest was her predecessor Jacob and Jacob means there is a translation for the name Jacob uh, which is the, the deceiver I want to say that Jacob a person he was a person in need a person that had no right for the blessing of God but because of the grace the favor the mercy of God he was able to reach the blessing Jacob was the one who was able to a taste of the grace and the mercy of God. And she knew so much about Jacob, but she didn't know that Jacob was great because of his efforts. But he was great because the Lord was present in his life. And that well was going to give the resources for her to meet with the fount of water. And interesting that the well was called the, the well of Jacob. It was called as the fount of Jacob, but it was not a fount, it was a well. But we have a well. And we even consider it as a, as a fount, but it is not a fount, it's a well. And the well, in order for you to draw out of water, there, it is necessary a human effort, a physical effort, but the fount, which is the Lord Jesus, nothing is necessary. And that was the greatest difference. That woman didn't need to do anything. She was used to draw water with her own resources, with her own efforts. And many times we are used to draw water with our own resources, with our own efforts. And sometimes we think that salvation is through works. But salvation is not through works, it's through grace. Because by grace you're saved. And it doesn't come from you, it is a gift of God. That's what the Lord Jesus comes to this woman and says, if you knew the gift of God, she knew the well. She knew water. She knew how to draw water through her own efforts, but she didn't know the didn't, she didn't know the gift of God. And how many people at this moment are in the same situation without knowing the gift of God, the grace of God, the favor of God, the mercy of God? And I want to tell you, the mercy of God is the reason why man is not uh, destroyed. But Jesus, the fount of the living water, was caused her to jump to eternal life. And that meeting was 
like in the days of Nehemiah, to restore adoration. Because the doubt of this woman at that moment was uh, to know how to adore God. My family, my predecessors, say that the place to adore is in this Mount Gerasim. There was a temple there. Those gods are saying the place of adoration in Jerusalem. There was a, a temple there. And she wanted to know. But you entered here in the house of the Lord. You want to know. What do I need to do? And Jesus explained to that woman. He said that the true worshippers are going to praise the Lord in spirit and in truth. And the Lord says more. The Father is seeking those who are going to praise Him. What, is, what was Jesus seeking at that moment? He was looking for that woman. The Father who is God, who is greater than the Father, sent Jesus to have a meeting with that woman. Because the desire of that woman was to praise the Lord. Until that moment, she didn't have any knowledge on how to praise, the God, praise God because through her traditions, her own culture, through her religion, had gotten her to go astray from the project of God of her life. And the word says, my brethren, that that woman, she came to Jesus and she met with Jesus in the fount of Jacob or on the well of Jacob. The word of the Lord tells us, my brethren, that Jesus, when he comes close to speak with that woman, there was in his heart many questionings. And she had answers to many questions. She even thought that Jesus was just a prophet. Surely, uh, at once Jesus asked to his disciples, who people say about me? And the disciples began to answer. They say that you are a prophet. And then he, Jesus asked uh, Peter, and what do you think? What do you think I am? And the word says, my brethren, that Peter said, you are Christ, the Son of the Living God. That woman thought that Jesus is just another prophet. The children just sang a song here about Mar Bartimaeus. When Bartimaeus heard a noise uh, a, of a crowd going on, on the road, and he was on the side of the road, when he heard that, that much noise, he asked, what is going on? And they answered, one from the crowd, this is Jesus of Nazareth. But when they answered Jesus of Nazareth, he said something. Wait, look, Bartimaeus was blind. And you know what he said? Jesus, son of David. That woman thought that thought that she was able to see. She looked at Jesus, she came to Jesus, but she was not identif she identified Jesus just as a prophet. She was looking but she was not seeing. And isn't it seen that uh, that she said, I see that you're a prophet. And many times we are like this, we are looking and thinking that Jesus is a prophet. You're not seeing, I'm going to tell you, you're not seeing anything. You are unable to understand anything. When Jesus, Jesus was telling this woman near the well and she was not understanding anything, and that Jesus was everything that she needed for her life. Many times we think that we need many things for our lives. And Jesus comes to Martha and 
Sister Mary, and he said, it's only one thing. It's only one thing. And Mary, Mary chose the good part because Mary was at the feet of the Savior. She was at the feet of the Lord. And at that night, uh, that woman said, um, that day that woman said, I see that you're a prophet, but Jesus is not a, just a prophet. He was a prophet of Nazareth. But can they would say, can anything good come from come out of Nazareth? If you speak about Nazareth, you're speaking about just another prophet. A prophet is being despised in the world today. Just despise, despise a prophet and continue without beauty and power. But Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. His eyes are like the flames of fire. His hair is like the white wall. On his thigh is written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That was the Jesus that was speaking with that woman. Jesus was revealing himself to her. Jesus now is revealing to you, my sister, tonight in this place because you are near the well. Here there is water. But the water that God wants to give you so that you can drink tonight is it going to be a water that is going to jump to eternal life. But it is a resource that the Lord is making available not only for this life. Because if you desire Jesus only for this life, we are the most miserable of all creatures. And the Lord doesn't want miserable. He wants the, the, the happy ones. He wants you to be happy. That's why he went there to interrupt. He went there to change, to cause a change of life in that woman. He went there to restore, to restitute the duration of the heart of that woman because one day she had, but now she didn't have. Because if we have com commitment with God, it is no longer with the Lord, it was with another thing, other things. But the word says, First, the kingdom of God and all the other things afterwards. The word says, my brethren, that Jesus was there near the, the fount, and a woman from Samaria came to draw water. She came because she had a necessity. And Jesus knew the necessity of that woman. Jesus also knew why you are here, my brother and sister. He you know why you came here tonight. He knows your doubt. He knows the intention of your hearts and the thoughts of your mind. That's why Jesus stayed there beside the well of Jacob. Because the well of Jacob, it guides men to Jesus. We cannot stay in the well. We need to go to the fount. The church is the well of Jacob, where Jesus is present to offer a man, not the water from the well, but that water that will flow into eternal life. And tonight, that's what the Lord is doing here. Have a meeting with that woman, because salvation is a meeting. There's no salvation without a meeting. Meeting. And Jesus went there to meet with that woman. And Jesus tonight came specially, especially because of you, my brother and sister, to have a meeting with you tonight, to open up your eyes, to reveal his project that he has for, for your life, to offer you something that you never experienced before, salvation and eternal life. Many times we have religion. Religion is one thing. Salvation it's another completely different. That woman already had a religion. But the Lord went there to give this woman salvation, to give her eternal life. And that's what God wants to do here tonight with you. If you drink of this water, if you accept my, accept my project, it will cause a fountain of water to, to flow from your heart that will jump to eternal life. 
and the desire of the Lord is that you jump into eternal life. The desire of the Lord tonight is that you are praise the Lord, praise the Father, but above all, praise the Father in spirit and in truth. Because the desire of the Lord is that you leave this place praising Him, glorifying Him, knowing that He has promoted for our life salvation and eternal life. She didn't know the gift of God, but at that day, she was able to know the gift of God, the favor, the mercy through Christ Jesus. And that's what the Lord is offering to you tonight. Amen. to invite the church to stand up. The Lord has shown a woman. The greatest difficulty of this woman was to be able to see. She's unable to see. She lost completely her vision. But tonight, she would go to a well. And on that well there, 
she would wash her face and her vision was restored. The Lord tonight is clarifying, he's opening up the eyes, he's revealing the project that he has for the life of this woman. Of a, a meeting on this well, not on the well of Jacob, but with the fount of living water, which is the Lord Jesus, so that we are able to reach from, through Him eternal life. Our eyes are opened, and the whole project of God is revealed to our lives. And that's what He's doing here tonight. Lord, we praise You. Thankful because You have already done and has revealed to Your people and to Your church and for this woman especially that You have scheduled with her a meeting with You and we pray to You and praise You and glorify the Lord because, because we're going to leave this place praising and adoring Lord because we know Lord that Your gift, Your favor, Your grace, Your mercy has been able to reach us tonight in this place. Praise you for your people. We have not lacked the, the fount of living waters and that every day you have given us supply and quenched our church, uh, our thirst and has prepared us for eternal life. Take us under your protection, pray in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit with the people, the whole people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen, my brother. The church may be seated. You, my brother and sister, who are with us, you are welcome to this place. We want to say that we have services here on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 o'clock and Saturday, Sunday at 7 o'clock uh, in the night, Saturday at 6 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, women meeting and tomorrow uh, Sunday morning uh, Sunday school at 10 30 in the morning and tomorrow especially we're not going to have a service in the morning here in our church we have a meeting a mini seminar here in the church of Hollandale is going to begin at 10 o'clock in the morning and we're going to have there two classes it's going to be noon around two or we're going to be returning to our homes the brethren that want, you should arrive around 9 o'clock there in the morning because they will offer their a breakfast and you who are here with us, you are welcome. And from this moment, you're already invited to participate on this meeting on the Church of Allendale. Just go uh, on Google Maps, Maranatha Christian Church or Hollandale and it's, Google is going to take us straight to the, our church there or ask the address if you have their allies you can do the projection from there you already invite any person can participate if you want to take your friends, neighbors you desire the Lord say. if you need a prayer after season we're going to have a, a meeting group be.